We are Homo sapiens, that is modern humans. During our thousands of years journey, we drew pictures on walls, made sculptures, invented the wheel, split the atom, and then threw it at each other. But did you notice, we did it all alone because we are alone, one of the loneliest species in the universe. But different species of animals are currently alive at the same time. Why are we alone? Did others fail? They failed. Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and others disappeared one by one, but how? Before we get into the subject, let me remind you, if you like the video, please show it on YouTube by clicking the like button. Also, you can support us by subscribing. In fact, when dawn came for modern humans, the earth was not as it is now, and I'm not saying this only because of the climate or geography because at the time when Homo sapiens emerged, other species of humans were also alive. I'm talking about a full 300,000 years ago. At that time, the last members of the Heidelberg humans and Homo nality were in Africa. If we look a bit east to Asia, we can see Homo erectus and Homo floriensis. And of course, Neanderthals were dominant in Europe. But somehow, 40,000 years ago, we were left alone on Earth. Really, how did they disappear? Let's delve into a bit of detail to find the answer and start with the Neanderthals. Neanderthals were similar to humans. They just had more pronounced brows, a more protruding face, and they were shorter and stockier than us. But the size of their brains was almost the same as ours. In fact, this human species was similar to us in terms of productivity. For example, they designed and produced various things for daily life and hunting, such as clothing and axes. But let me tell you something that will surprise you more. We have evidence that they could have symbolic thinking just like us. Because we think they buried their dead and used some objects in burial rituals. According to new studies, they probably made the oldest cave paintings we know. However, despite their works lasting until today and even passing on some of their DNA to us through the crispy intercourses we had with them, unfortunately, their lineage became extinct. And first of all, let me point out, the common view is that they left us 40,000 years ago. But some studies reduce this time to 24,000. Also, this uncertainty in time is present in the reason for the extinction of their line. Firstly, we might have destroyed them. Surprising, isn't it? Not really. What one does to its own kind, it can do to others. If there was a competition for resources between two human species due to natural disasters or similar scenarios, it's possible that an intense war might have occurred. Alternatively, instead of direct warfare, when Homo sapiens left Africa and encountered Neanderthals, there might have been a possibility of infecting them with a disease to which they had no immunity. Firstly, Homo sapiens migrating from Africa could have been a reservoir for tropical diseases, posing a significant threat to Eurasian Neanderthals in the past. Infectious diseases can lead to both direct catastrophic outcomes and gradually diminish the hunting and gathering characteristics of a species. Of course, the extinction of their lineage may not have been so dramatic. For instance, based on widely scattered fossil remains, we can understand that Neanderthals were moving in small groups. Therefore, Homo sapiens, being numerically superior, could have gradually reduced their population. Here, I'm not just referring to numerical superiority. Based on brain anatomy, modern humans were likely superior to Neanderthals in creativity, analytical thinking, tool use capacities, and probably even in the division of labor within social structures. Thus, over a time span of thousands of years, our numerical and intellectual superiority may have contributed to a significant decline in Neanderthal reproductive success. Moreover, 40,000 years ago, there were signs of a climate crisis, particularly in regions where Neanderthals lived, featuring extreme cold weather, which likely played a crucial role. In fact, all the events I've mentioned so far can be supported to some extent with evidence. Therefore, 
we can say that all these factors might have contributed to the extinction of Neanderthals to some extent. Now, let's set Neanderthals aside and go a bit further back in time. Let's look at Homo floresiensis in Indonesia from 50,000 years ago, or in other words, the Flores people. We discovered this species relatively recently, in 2003, and it was initially debated whether it was a person with Down syndrome. Because of their heights around 1 meter and large feet, they are likened to the hobbits in the Lord of the Rings movie. Since this species has been recently discovered, debates are still ongoing, but we may have consumed their generations because they disappeared when we set foot in those lands. This also makes us natural suspects. Furthermore, another significance of Flores humans is reaching their bones on the islands. Scientists, based on this, conducted additional research on the existence of different species that lived on other islands on Earth. And these studies bore fruit in 2007 with the Homo luzonensis remains extracted from the northern Luzon region of the Philippines. Actually, right after the initial remains were discovered, it was thought that this species was not a new one, but belonged to modern humans. However, with the discovery of new remains, it was later understood that this creature was indeed a new human species. However, we have yet to have enough evidence to fully describe their physical characteristics or how they disappeared. Therefore, I can only say that their generations could have vanished between 50,000 and 67,000 years ago. Now, going back 100,000 years, we will take a look at Homo erectus, also known as the upright man. Although I say 100,000 years ago, the emergence of this species can be traced back up to 2 million years ago. So, if we talk about survival, they are the masters of the game. Also, as we can understand from its name, this species was the first hominid that could stand completely upright. However, they were also the first humans to spread across the earth. But I ask, how could the line of Erectus, who started eating meat due to adaptations, rapidly digesting protein, and thus rapidly growing the brain and body, become extinct? especially when they were spread over such vast territories. First of all, to avoid any confusion, when we say they spread across the earth, we don't mean they stayed there for 1.5 to 2 million years. For now, we only have fossils from different regions corresponding to different periods or sometimes the same periods. Their last members lived in the Java and Indonesia region approximately 110,000 years ago. Interestingly, today we think they became extinct due to laziness and conservatism. Because the main theory is that this species fell victim to climate change, but according to some archaeological excavations, these upright humans did not show much willingness to adapt to their surroundings. For example, even during periods of climate and geographical changes, they continued to use the same tools and do the same things. Also, Standing up has its advantages, yes, but it also made them a somewhat easily noticeable target. I guess the last thing a lazy person would want is to be an open target. But on the other hand, there are views that their laziness encouraged gender-based division of labor and home life. Look, there is no first in evolution. There's no first human, first modern human, and such. It's a process evolving through evolutionary mechanisms, and the dates I provided can be both rough and subject to change with new discoveries. So, I'm not saying a specific time when the first Homo was born. In fact, one of the best examples that can be given to draw attention to the point I want to make is Homo heidelbergensis. Because many researchers consider Heidelberg humans as our ancestors. It is believed that sapiens evolved from this species in Africa. However, we say the lineage of Heidelbergensis, the first human species living in cold environments and hunting large animals, ended 300 to 200,000 years ago. Yet, I set the dawn of sapiens back to 300,000 years ago, and I even said Heidelbergensis was there at that time. Moreover, it is widely believed that the members of this species in Europe evolved into Neanderthals. Although new discoveries showed that there was not a clean transition from Heidelbergensis to the other two species. But for now, 
I won't touch upon these debates because my only concern is to introduce homo species outside of us. Just know this, saying this evolved from that is not always that simple and straightforward. Anyway, returning to our topic, let's at least take a look at the little humans of South Africa, Homo Nelidians, whom we estimate to have become extinct at least 200,000 years ago for now. There's not much to examine about them since we discovered this species in 2013, and they still largely preserve their mysteries. Actually, the reason I said at least a moment ago is because we don't exactly know when they left us. Of course, new research makes some inferences about their eating habits, tool-making abilities, or characteristic features like symbolic thinking. But for now, I think it's not necessary to go into so much detail in this video. Also, while we're at it, let's mention another mysterious species. We can trace the Rudolph humans found in Kenya back almost 2 million years. But to be frank, we are still doubtful whether they were 100% homo. And finally, our skillful human. Homo habilis, who lived under the Sahara in Africa 1.5 to 2.4 million years ago, is considered the first homo species. They are called skillful because the oldest known stone tools belong to them, and probably due to their failure to keep up with the changing climate and geography in terms of producing things like tools and clothing, their generations became extinct. Well, as we slowly come to the end of the video, let me remind you once again. I didn't go into too much detail in this video because my main intention was just to introduce them. We can delve into each of them individually with future research updates. That's it for me today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe.